Hey, what's going on YouTube? Josh here. And in this video, we're going to be talking about if your business is uh, like starting out or you're trying to get to a million dollars, whether you're an e-commerce, drop shipping, a brick and mortar business or anything like that. This video is going to help you to find and navigate the right way forward in terms of getting your business to a million dollars in revenue. And this video is pretty much focused on a favorite book of mine. Uh, the book is called Ready, Fire, Aim by Michael Masterson, uh, zero to 100 million million in no time flat. So what I'm going to be focusing on is the first section of the book, which is pretty much the zero to one million stage. Now the book actually goes through and talks about uh, three different other stages, which is, you know, the one million to 10 million, right? The 10 million to 50 million, and then also the 50 million to $100 million in revenue. So I really, really, really highly recommend you go ahead and read this book. But for those of you that are just getting started out, or maybe your business is kind of teetering around the 500 to $700,000 per year mark, um, I'm gonna to talk to you about the first section, which is pretty much going to be focusing on a few elements um, that are super, super in, in, like important for you guys to understand to kind of propel you up to that one million per year mark. Now, the first thing is, what is the deadliest thing at this stage, right? Now, the first de deadliest thing at this stage is the inability to bring in new customers, right? Like you're not getting consistent customers or consistent flow of customers and unable to make profitable sales over and over again, right? So a lot of people as uh, businesses, right? Um, when you're getting started, you guys start to focus on the things that aren't really that important, you know, like your website, your logo, all that kind of stuff. Now, conversion rate optimization is very, very important. But overall, the most important thing is your marketing message and how you're going to get people into the business. Okay. So the book really at this stage at the most key element was the optimum selling strategy. This is the absolute key to get you guys to the $1 million mark. Now I'm going to break that down for you really quickly. The first thing to take you uh, take your business to from zero to 1 million is the following. The focus at this stage, right? If you guys are at below 1 million, you should be focusing a hundred percent on just selling right don't focus on the un like the important non-important nonsensical other elements of running a business like your website office equipment what computer you're going to use blah 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 focus rather on just getting your products to consistently sell right and getting that flow into your business right so let's go ahead and continue and break this down now, the number one rule of entrepreneurship is that without any sales you don't have a business right so hopefully the majority of you guys are actually getting sales in and therefore you have a business but the number two rule of entrepreneurship after that is understanding that there is a direct relationship between the success of your business and also the percentage of your time capital and effort spent on marketing and selling right so again no sales no equals no cash and that means you have no business okay so if you can't get your marketing and selling right your propositions there properly nailed down then you're going to very 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 quickly realize that you your business is going to struggle so the under like what what uh, Michael Masterson actually goes ahead and talks about is this 80-20 rule. So this is the Pareto principle, but he kind of twists it and uses it in a different context. So he's saying that his, your time as an entrepreneur during this stage should be split 80-20 based on the following. 80% should be focused on your marketing and selling, right? Trying to get that flow into the business. And then 20% of your efforts should be focused on everything else, right? You know, your website, you know, your equipment, you know, fulfillment, all that kind of stuff. Just getting that flow low in is the absolute most important and high priority action point for you as a business owner during this point. Now, a lot of people in this stage, right, they really try to focus on perfectionism, right? We as uh, in contemporary society, we often focus on perfection, right? We, we fear failure and therefore we want to make sure that whenever we launch something into the market, that it is as perfect as possible. But Michael says, you know, generally that is not the case. Uh, generally get just getting people in the door is uh, the most important, right? And this is so, so true. When we launched our own business, thankfully uh, I had this book to kind of guide me, but we pretty much went and launched a brand 
new product in a brand new niche and we had a lot of problems along the way but because we were initially able to sell about 1,500 units from our first go we were able to have a capital injection into the business and more resources to go ahead and fix up and pretty much improve the whole flow and our whole product as well right so as the book title suggests ready fire aim you fire first right and then you tweak and hone things in and you kind of dial things in as you go right but you fire first so at this point also your greatest your business's greatest need is to generate positive cash flow as well as acquiring customers on a consistent basis while maintaining profitability. So we're gonna talk about how you guys can do that and Michael really kind of breaks this down really amazingly. And this has kind of been the focus and key element of my role as an entrepreneur going forward ever since I've uh, read this book. Key to sales, right? And this is your optimum selling strategy, right? How do you figure out what your optimum st selling strategy is? So there are a few ways. So master and talks about that we as entrepreneurs we must at this point become a one-trick marketing point pony we should be focusing on specifically how to sell one product to a particular marketplace over and over again and also we should be spending 80 percent of our time doing so we should we don't have to be focusing on multiple different marketing channels right because and we don't want to get shiny object syndrome where we just chase multiple different elements at the same time okay and this is going to be very very tedious and also cumbersome to our journey as an entrepreneur because our efforts will be divided and therefore we're going to feel like we're just running in in place right we're not really making big headways. I just want to give you guys an example. Uh, one of my students, private students, they recently within three months of launching hit the 10,000 uh, revenue mark. And despite you know having issues with Facebook and all that kinds of stuff, she really just focused honed in on her optimum selling strategy and figured out that, you know, TikTok worked really well for her, organic TikToks, right? And she went ahead and started selling and bam, $10,000 within the first three months. Super, super proud. I just wanted to give that um, there because she just focused on the one thing, right? How to sell that one product, regardless of what channel. So there are four components of the optimum selling strategy, right? That Masterson talks about. Now, the first one is your products that you should sell. Now this one I'm kind of tweaked a little bit and kind of added my own spices in there. But it's about um, what is your product? What is the product that you want to be your lead product? Focus here on providing value to your customers rather than thinking that this custom, this product is going to make you money, right? If you lead with value, right? Your, the money will come. So just focus on leading with value, trying to impact change in people's lives, right? And then the money will naturally come. There's a lot, often a misconception that um, a lot of people, beginners have, right? Now, the second element is pricing. So how much should you charge? It's very simple. Simply, you should at this point be looking at your competitors. You should be looking at your competitors as a starting base, right? If you're doing better than them, if you want to provide a better quality product, then obviously you can charge more. If you want to provide a lower quality product, which you shouldn't be doing anyway, you can charge a lower product. But your competitor's pricing, right, is generally the best starting point for you, right? Because they've already figured out their optimum selling strategy, their audience, and their offer. And they've been consistently being able to do so. So that's a great, great starting point. And you can't walk through you know their same door and figure expect that you're going to get the same results you need to walk through your own door right but it's a great starting point now discounting he talks about discounting now in terms of your pricing mix of you know the different prices of your products in your in your field or in your inventory you should be looking at one primary product to be the one that gets customers in the door. It should be primed for acquisition, meaning there's in really high value, right? But it's priced, you know, pretty reasonably, right? And therefore, it's going to just generate that constant flow of people, right? And then after that, you can have multiple other products that are sold at a higher price or equal value, but a higher margin, right? And then you can really just focus on the emphasis of value here. So why do you want to discount your products and services? Now, I'm not talking about the 50% discounts that usual dropshippers do um, or anything like that, but discounts should be used as a way of um, attracting customers in, right? That are kind of on the fence. Now, discounting in Masterson says is to be used to get as many qualified customers as possible, right? Once you have the customers in, then you can use your back end and really try to leverage the back end and 
continue to please your customer and right, to increase the lifetime value of the customer. And that's just a, a guaranteed way of multiplying your business's revenue like two, three, four times, just depending on how many products you offer them. And as long as they're complementary or they satisfy and provide value to them, that's just going to continue to increase the overall lifetime value. When do you, when should you use discounts, right? So Masterson says you should just use it at the front end acquisition only. So think sales, think promotion days. Um, these, the reason why companies do big, big discounts is because they want to acquire you as a customer at the beginning, at the get go, right? And then from there, they go ahead and offer you through email, through SMS, through other campaigns, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, other products that are going to overall increase the lifetime value of you as a customer for them. The last two elements are pretty much your copy and advertising messaging. And this is pretty much how you're going to persuade your customer to buy your product. What are you going to do? How are you going to you know, provide that? How are you going to give them the idea that you're going to be providing value to them? Right? So generally there is one main marketing angle that really resonates with your audience. So you need to figure this out urgently. And Masterson te tells us that it, this should be 80% of our efforts focusing on that marketing and selling, right? Don't waste your efforts on other things, right? Don't really waste your efforts on other things. This is why when you're doing advertising, right? It's so important to do creative testing and angle testing. I'm gonna go through that in another video, but this is pretty much spoken from an expert who's built many, many hundreds of um, businesses that are doing $100 million per year, right? So let's try to listen to him. Now, the last element of this optimum selling strategy is pretty much the media platform in which you use, the media channel. So where are your customers? This is a question that you need to ask yourself and then answer through doing product customer and customer research. So go where your competitors are. So again, similar to your pricing, you you want to have a look at where your, custom, uh, your competitors are selling to your customers, right? Because generally speaking, if they, they've already a f a further ahead of you, right? They've already walked the path that you want to walk. You need to be looking at what they've done because they've already achieved what you want to achieve, right? So if they're advertising on Facebook, advertise on Facebook. If they're, if they're advertising on Pinterest, focus on Pinterest, right? It really depends on where your customers are. Now, the pricing product and you know marketing messaging or your copy will not work if you're in the wrong channel, right? If you're trying to sell to an older demographic, right? And you're using a platform that is just completely, completely for the new generations. Generally speaking, you won't get much success. But if you have a mediocre product, right, that provides, you know, basic value, um, the basic value propositions to your customer. But if you're in the right channel, right, exactly where your audience are, then you guaranteed will continue to get sales. So these are the key elements that really should be focused on. As a long story short, TLDR, right, you guys should be focusing on the one product you're acquisition acquisition product, right? I'm going to be talking about this a lot in different videos, but that acquisition product and also how to sell it consistently and profitably. And that only comes through 80% of your efforts for you being focused on how to market and how to message, um, you know, your offers, how to position your offers so that that flow of customers continue to come in place. Now, just as a um, caveat, a lot of businesses out there generally build their business model on the fact that of loss leader or barely breaking even. They would either, they're happy to, you know, spend a hundred dollars and receive a hundred dollars just to acquire that customer so that they can sell multiple, multiple products on the back end. Now, a lot of people don't really speak about lifetime value in this space, but this is super, super important just as a business general guideline, right? If you guys, the, the more you can extend your lifetime value of each customer, the greater profitability that your business will have. So this applies to not only dropshipping, e-commerce, right? But also to, if you're providing a service for a company, if you have a brick and mortar business, Amazon FBA, all of these kinds of things, right? As long as we acquire customers at a efficient and profitable rate, or even if we figure out, you know, that we can break even and then make the money back later, right? With, with increasing the lifetime value, that's fine too, right? Just wanted to really, really share all of this because there's so many, so many gems just in this one thing. So focus on, um, you know, becoming a one trick mar uh, marketing pony, right? Focusing on the one channel and not really, long story short, don't become one of those people that are chasing those shiny objects. Don't get shiny object syndrome. Really hone your craft, figure out this one thing. And I think that uh, my channel is going to be the best place for you to kind of focus on that, right? So if you guys enjoyed this content, let me know because I'd love to do more videos like this. Um, pretty much we read, uh, like I read a lot of these kinds of videos and 
honestly, it was really, really fun to go ahead and build this flowchart out for you guys and provide insane amounts of value, right? So if you guys haven't read this book already, Ready for Your Aim by Michael Masterson, I would highly recommend it. But if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Also hit that notification bell so you know exactly when I'm dropping another video. But yeah, let me know what you thought about this video in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.